What's up? Today I'll be ranking every single amusement and theme park I've been to. I've been to 32 so far, and how I determined what and what isn't a park is there has to be a coaster there. It has to have multiple other non-coaster rides. It can't be a fair, it can't be a zoo, and it can't be an alpine coaster place. So enough of the talking, let's get into the list. Number 32 is Fun For All. This park is located in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. It's just an entertainment center with an arcade and some rides. The rides are outdoors and there's just one credit. Fiesta Express, which is the most boring coaster I've ridden. When I was exiting, I realized the go-kart track was open and I wanted to do it. So we asked the people at the counter and they said it was closed, but we knew that wasn't true. So it wasn't a great note to end off on, but it's just a credit park, whatever. Fun for All ranks 31 for coaster collection, 31 for atmosphere and dead last for scenery. Number 31 is Go-Karts Plus. This is in Williamsburg, Virginia. It has a few cool looking rides, but I just came for the kitty credit. Python Pit, it's actually a really fun kitty coaster, but that's really all I cared to do. It looked like it would be a cool place to stick around for, but I just wanted to get to Bush Gardens. Go-Karts Plus ranks 29th for coaster collection, 29th for atmosphere, and 31st for scenery. Number 30 is Funland of Fredericksburg. This is of course in Fredericksburg, Virginia. You could go here when you go to King's Dominion. There's an indoor section and an outdoor section. I didn't really get a good look at the outdoor section, but indoors it's cool. It's pretty much an arcade and there's just a credit in there with Twist and Shout, which is just an FPS piece of spinner. Nothing crazy. The ride up was a coaster enthusiast, which was awesome. I did meet Clint Novak too, which was cool. I really enjoyed my experience here. The park itself wasn't great, but it was a nice experience. Funland of Fredericksburg ranks 28th for coaster collection, 16th for atmosphere, and 23rd for scenery. Number 29 is the island of Pigeon Forge in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This is a place you can get an SPF visa credit when you're going to Dollywood. The ride is called Spinning Parrots, and it's the worst SPF visa I've ridden, but it's fun. I did the observation wheel as well. We weren't there for long, but it was a pretty good looking park with a little bit of theming. The Island of Pigeon Forge ranks 30th for coaster collection, 30th for atmosphere, and 7th for scenery. Number 28 is Sesame Place, located in Langhorne, Pennsylvania. This park is meant for smaller children. It's themed as Sesame Street. It has two coasters, one of them being a pretty intense family coaster, and the other being an ejector machine. The other rides are definitely tame. And this is the perfect park to go to with kids. Oscar's Wacky Taxi didn't open until a certain time of the day, so we got the chance to do some of the other rides. I know I'd love this place as a kid, but it can't be any higher now. Sesame Place ranks 26th for coaster collection, 27th for atmosphere, and 24th for scenery. Number 27 is Lakemont Park. This park is right in downtown Altoona, Pennsylvania. They have two really solid coasters in Leap the Dips and Skyliner. The park didn't open on time though, we were sitting in the heat for a while and they don't even test the coasters before people ride, nor do they inspect them because we were hanging out way before the park opened. We could get right under the coasters, we were in weird places that would be restricted to other parks. This is by far the weirdest park I've been to, it's very run down as well, although it still manages to look barely good because of what's around it and it's kind of a public park now but the two coasters were pretty fun. Both gave good air time. Lake Mount Park ranks 21st for coaster collection, 12th for atmosphere, and 18th for scenery. Number 26 is ZDT's Amusement Park, located in Sagan, Texas. I recommend checking this place out for the switchback credit when you're near Six Flags Fiesta, Texas, or SeaWorld San Antonio. I did the world's only wooden shuttle coaster 21 times. I didn't do the other rides because we had to leave at a certain time and I wanted to ride Switchback as much as possible. There's only a couple more though, and they have an indoor part with an arcade and some pretty good food. It's nothing crazy, but I enjoyed my time here a lot. ZDT's ranks 27th for coaster collection, 28th for atmosphere, and 22nd for scenery. Number 25 is Waldemere. This is one of the closest parks to me in Erie, Pennsylvania. The park is good because of the flat rides. Chaos and x Cream are two of my favorite flats out there. The coaster collection isn't that great. Ravine Flyer 2 with the blue train is a great ride. I love it. With the red train, it isn't that great. It's pretty low in my rankings. 
Overall, it's a nice park. I like to visit once a year, but nothing crazy. I'd like them to add something a bit bigger, maybe someday. Wildermere ranks 24th for Coaster Collection, 6th for Atmosphere, and 11th for Scenery. Number 24 is NASCAR Speed Park. This is in Sevierville, Tennessee, which is pretty much Pigeon Forge, so it's right near Dollywood and Island of Pigeon Forge, pretty much on the same street as Island of Pigeon Forge. It's interesting because this is the only place I consider a park that I've never ridden a coaster at. It was closed, but I just rode the go-karts when I went. absolutely love go-karts. Like, I had such a good time. I would move it higher, but it's just so hard to compare it to coaster places. So, here's where it ranks. NASCAR Speed Park ranks dead last for coaster collection, 24th for atmosphere, and 29th for scenery. Number 23 is Six Flags Daring Lake. This is my home park, located a little over an hour away in Corfu, New York. Um, compared to other corporate parks out there, this place kind of sucks. I trash on a lot, but I still have fun coming here with friends, even if it's not that amazing of a park. The coaster collection could be better, but my main complaints are how it's run, and the flat rides. They have a lot of solid flat rides, but none of them are amazing. There's a lot missing with this park, and hopefully Six Flags gives it some attention. Six Flags Durant Lake ranks 19th for coaster collection, 26th for atmosphere, and 15th for scenery. Number 22 is Knobles. This is, in my opinion, the most overrated park I've been to. I think if I went with a different situation, it would be different. It was 100 degrees there. I couldn't get my preferred seating with my disability pass on toaster. Two of their clo coasters were closed, and I don't know exactly how to snap the flyers. Neither does Coaster Demon, apparently. But I want Redemption. I think Phoenix would be better my next ride. And I'd like for Impulse and Flying Turns to actually be open. I don't know when I'll be back. Could be a couple years. But until then, I think it's overrated. Renewables ranks 20th for Coaster Collection, 25th for Atmosphere, and 3rd for Scenery. Number 21 is Great Escape. Located in Queensbury, New York, the other side of the state for me. Its coaster lineup isn't that impressive. I did like Comet and Steam and Demon's pretty fun, but this place has some amazing flat rides. I love Blizzard, the indoor scrambler. I love Pandemonium, which gave me insane butterflies. I loved Extreme Supernova, the MIDI Discovery, and my favorite flat ride of all time, Adirondack Outlaw, is located here. It will be in my top 10 if it was a coaster. It's absolutely awesome. What a nice looking park. The though with fantastic discount Busch Gardens Williamsburg entrance. Great Escape ranks 25th for Coaster Collection, 23rd for Atmosphere, and 4th for Scenery. Number 20 is Six Flags Over Georgia. This is located in Austell, Georgia. It's not far from Atlanta. You can see the city if you're high enough, like on Goliath for example. And this park is operated terribly, like most Six Flags parks. This is on a new level though. The employees are awful, the GP are awful, the atmosphere is bad. The disability pass system is good for the most part, other than with Twisted Cyclone, but it's one of the best I've seen, so I'm fine with that. The top two at this park is awesome, but the rest of the lineup is mediocre overall. Try going here on a day that's not crowded. Your day will be 500 times better. Six Flags Over Georgia ranks 11th for coaster collection, dead last for atmosphere, and 27th for scenery. Number 19 is Universal Studios Orlando, located in Orlando, Florida. This is the park opposite to Islands of Adventure. It makes up half the Universal Orlando Resort. It's the far weaker side, but it does have a few great rides that are worth riding for sure. Hollywood Rip Ride Rock is extremely underrated. Revenge of the Mummy along with Harry Potter and the Escape from Gringotts are both great indoor coasters. It sucks having a much better park right next to it instead because I do enjoy this place. Universal Studios Orlando ranks 18th for Coaster Collection, 14th for Atmosphere, and 21st for Scenery. Number 18 is Disney's Animal Kingdom. This park is in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. I haven't been here since 2016 when I was GP, and I'll head back there in a few years. But the only two coasters I did there were Expedition Everest and Primeval World, only they had there. Although Primeval World is my least memorable coaster and I don't remember exactly what it was like. It's an awesome themed park, it's a good looking park, it has a few good rides and has an awesome atmosphere. I 
well, as awesome as you can get for a Disney park. I do like Disney to an extent, man. This is a pretty good park, I'd say. Nothing insane, though. Animal Kingdom ranks 23rd for Coaster Collection, 18th for Atmosphere, and 12th for Scenery. Number 17 is Disney's Magic Kingdom, another park in the Disney World Resort in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. It's the most famous of them all. Actually, the most famous park in the world. But it's not really special. It's not magical, as many GP out there say. However, it was a fun experience back in 2016. I'll do it again sometime in a few years. I love Space Mountain. I love Splash Mountain. There were many things I loved about the park. But yeah, it was insanely crowded like usual. Magic Kingdom ranks 22nd for Coaster Collection, 17th for Atmosphere, and 19th for Scenery. Number 16 is Canada's Wonderland. This is in Vaughan, Ontario. I really can't wait to head back there next year. I only had one day before, but I'd just love to get rerides and everything. I want to get the six credits that I'm allowed to get that I missed, and I'd need more than one day. Their employees were so inconsistent with the disability pass, they didn't know what they were doing, and the GP were terrible, constantly bumping into me in line, not giving me any space. This park is the flat ride capital of the world, but I only did one shockwave, which is not unique compared to others. So I need to do some of the, those others too. Canada's Wonderland ranks 12th for Coaster Collection, 22nd for Atmosphere, and 20th for Scenery. Number 15 is Dorney Park. This is in Allentown, Pennsylvania. It's a smaller Cedar Fair Park, but it's not my least favorite actually. There's something about the park that I just love. Between Hydra being incredible, Demon Drop being insane, talent shocking me, and such a shock of how nice the park was. This really shined when I went. It looked like it was taken well care of and landscaped, and they did a nice job of it. Cons are that Possessed was close, but that's intimate, really. I couldn't get the kitty credit, and Wild Mouse knocked the wind out of me, which was terrible. Oh, and did I mention Steel Force being a good ride? Dorney Park ranks 17th for Coaster Collection, 20th for Atmosphere, and 25th for Scenery. Number 14 is Six Flags America. Located in Bowie, Maryland, this park has been known to be bad and hated on, but it was pretty good this year, and I had a wonderful visit here. The much better ride of steel just made the park for me, but there's a few other coasters that are good or really solid, and I feel completely safe and comfortable inside the park, despite what people have said about it. There was a little incident outside the park because some crazy woman was screaming at us for letting people out and being friendly, but... There was none of that inside the park. Keep up the good 2021 work, SFA. Six Flags America ranks 16th for Coaster Collection, 19th for Atmosphere, and 26th for Scenery. Number 13 is Busch Gardens Tampa. This park is located in Tampa, Florida, and it's the second most overrated park I've been to. It's a beautiful park. It has a bunch of really solid rides, but my favorite coaster from the park ranks in my 30s, which is terrible for the best coaster in the park. I'm sure this park will be moving up once I Glazy opens, but it's not open, so I'm too bad so far. I think Montu is an average coaster, which hurts the lineup for me, and everything is just so spread out. It's a headache to get from Sheikra to Cheetah Hunt, and Falcon's Fury is a great drop tower, but not the best or anything. I do love the African theme, though. It's awesome. Busch Gardens Tampa ranks 14th for Coaster Collection, 10th for Atmosphere, and 9th for Scenery. Number 12 is SeaWorld Orlando. This park is Shocker in Orlando, Florida, and it was my very first park from the SeaWorld chain. I got a very nice first impression of the chain. They have a few awesome B&Ms and Journaling to Atlantis, which is an awesome water coaster. One thing I loved was the aquarium. That was so cool. I had a good experience there because we got there right after our flight to Orlando. I had ridden Mako twice, but then it downpoured, and a couple of the pathways were flooded. But Manta opened back up, the ride I was getting on when everything closed, and I rode that. I got the Journey to Atlantis credit as well, and I got tons of rerides on Manta and Mako. Kraken was closed for the day though. A few days later, before our flight home, we went back. I rode Kraken a few times, and rode Manko, Mako a bunch of times, and I got the kitty credit, and we left. Even though there's not an insane amount of things to do here, I could spend a whole day here for sure, especially after Icebreaker. SeaWorld Orlando ranks 15th for Coaster Collection, 8th for Atmosphere, and 14th for Scenery. 
Number 11 is Kennywood. This is located in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, right outside of Pittsburgh. I haven't been since 2019, but I plan on going back next year when I visited Steel Curtain. It hadn't opened to the public for the first time a couple weeks earlier, but it was down for the day, so I've never ridden it. I did do other credits though, and their lineup was actually pretty solid. Obviously, you've got the Phantoms of Revenge, and the Woodies of Racer and Jackrabbit are awesome airtime machines. All, th all three of those are, so Candywood is the place to go for airtime. But Skyrocket and Exterminator are good as well. I'm not the biggest fan of Thunder Bullet, but some who absolutely love laterals do. I like laterals too, but not so much Thunderbolt. What an amazing scenery, getting a view of the hilly terrain and the houses that sit along the hills. Kennywood ranks 13th for coaster collection, 7th for atmosphere, and 5th for scenery. Number 10 is King's Dominion. Located in Doswell, Virginia, KD is a very interesting place. The entrance is so empty, so you feel like if you look behind you, you can see for miles beyond the parking lot. When you get in the park, it's just a long stretch. There's a pathway to the left, which leads to Dominator, which you should ride first since it's the only thing they let you ride in the 30 minutes before the park actually opens. Then there's a bunch of pathways off of that main pathway that lead to all the other rides in the park. The main two, of course, being Twisted Timbers and Intimidator 305. I want to give this park and its employees serious points for making my 200th credit as memorable as it could be, so thank you. The thing this park lacks is a supporting lineup. I-305 and Twisted Timbers are world class, Dominator is a great coaster, but the rest are really meh or bad. Tombili should help a bit though since I love free spins. Kings Island ranks 10th for coaster collection, 9th for atmosphere, and 28th for scenery. Number 9 is Carowinds. The location of this park is very interesting. It's right on the North and South Carolina border. Half of it is in Charlotte, North Carolina, which holds most of Fury 325, including the entrance. It also has Hurler and Carolina Cyclone. Fort Mill, South Carolina has Intimidator, Pepper Strike, and Afterburn. But Fury 325 is enough to make me prefer the North Carolina side more. It's currently in my top 10. It's just an extremely fun coaster. That's what the ride is best at, just being pure fun. It's a beautiful looking coaster, and the park in general I thought was very generic. Nothing really stood out about how the park looked itself. Minus Fury crossing the pathway. There's nothing about this park that looked insanely good, and I guess I was hoping it would be better in that sense. But this is a great park with lots of credits. I recommend two days here as well. Carowinds ranks 9th for coaster collection, 13th for atmosphere, and 30th for scenery. Number 8 is Six Flags Fiesta, Texas. This is in San Antonio, Texas. I went there in February 2020 for two days and it was a fun park. It has two standout coasters, the two RMCs, Iron Rattler and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso Coaster. The supporting cast is pretty solid too with Batman the Ride, Superman Krypton Coaster and Poltergeist. They're also adding Dr. Diabolical's Cliffhanger which I can't wait to get on in 2023. It's a very beautiful park too very nice place that i wish i vlogged at but i will in a couple years six flags fiesta texas ranks eighth for coaster collection 21st for atmosphere and sixth for scenery number seven is hershey park located in hershey pennsylvania this is where the real elite parks come in this park is a great top four and overall just a really good lineup there's so much chocolate there there's some really cool chocolate themed things there's lots to do around the park but the park itself is definitely the highlight. You've got a great collection of Intamins, a couple of good B&Ms, and some really good Woodies, along with Laugh Track, which I find awesome, along with some classics. The one thing I wish this park did better was the Flat Ride Collection. I'd love some more flats here. This is a very popular home park as well for some reason, and I mean, it's a great home park to have. Hershey Park ranks 6th for Coaster Collection, 11th for Atmosphere, and 16th for Scenery. Number 6 is Six Flags Great Adventure. The park is located in Jackson Township, New Jersey, and it's my favorite Six Flags park. It was on my bucket list for years and certainly lived up to the hype and then some. El Toro was closed as well, and with that open, it'll probably be even better. The lineup is very good. The park had a good atmosphere. It's a very beautiful park, which is surprising. 
And I get so angry when people hate on this because Great Adventure is honestly very underrated to me. And Houdini's Great Escape, that thing's just messed up. I gotta get on more cool madhouses sometime in Europe. Six Flags Great Adventure ranks 7th for Coaster Collection, 15th for Atmosphere, and 13th for Scenery. Number 5 is Kings Island. Located in Mason, Ohio, I cannot wait to head back here very, very soon. I had an awesome time here my first visit. I had two days. I thought it's not too far off from the other Cedar Fair Park in Ohio. The lineup is just incredible because of the top six, really. It's a pretty nice looking park, but nothing insane. The atmosphere here is just unexplainable, and at night this place is very lively. It is awesome. I'm so glad it's open until midnight too, because even though it's still very lively during the day, at night is something special. Kings Island is just an incredible place and could move up after my next visit. We'll see. Kings Island ranks 4th for Coaster Collection, 1st for Atmosphere, and 17th for Scenery. Number 4 is Dollywood. This is in my favorite town I've been to, in my favorite county, and probably my favorite state, Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. This park is absolutely unbelievable. It's a very beautiful park. It's got an awesome coaster collection. The parking is very weird, but I kind of like it. There's so much to do here. The food is good, especially the cinnamon bread. There's even a church here, which is nice. There's just so much that you can do in the area in general, and Dollywood is the highlight, which is a really big compliment to Dollywood. I really want this park to rank higher for me. I really do, but for the time being, I'll put it at number four. Dollywood ranks number two for coaster collection, number three for atmosphere, and first for scenery. Number three is Universal Islands of Adventure. This is in Orlando, Florida. This is my favorite park in my favorite city. Let's get the non-important part out of the way first. Well, it is important actually, but the theming. This park is known for world-class theming, especially for the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. I do love that section, except it's so overcrowded that it's hard to be in that section for a long period of time. I love dinosaurs too, so that themed area is really nice. The reason this park ranks so high is mainly because of Velocicoaster, my favorite coaster I've ridden by far. It's just so incredible that I need to go back here more than any other park, just so I can ride this more. Dr. Doom's Fearfall is also a classic from when I was GP, but I didn't ride it this past time. I will next time. This is an amazing park, obliterates any park in Florida for me, and you can thank the amazing launch coasters for, spe specifically Velocicoaster for that. Islands of Adventure ranks 5th for Coaster Collection, 5th for Atmosphere, and 10th for Scenery. Number 2 is Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Located in Williamsburg, Virginia, I was blown away by this park. It's a very beautiful park. It feels like you're walking into a forest when you enter. The country themed sections are great, and there's no bad ride here. All of the coasters I get just as excited for before I get on them. I wish I did escape from Pompeii, but fitting its flyer is fun, um, although very short, and Mock Tower hurts your arms, but it has an overload of butterflies. And this place is so photogenic, there's so many beautiful places to take photos from. The food and is so good, the pretzel I had by Verbolton was so good. And with the addition of Pantheon, that won't hurt this park. I should have spent way more than a day and a half here. I felt like I spent longer though, just because of how memorable it is. Busch Gardens Williamsburg ranks 3rd for Coaster Collection, 4th for Atmosphere, and 2nd for Scenery. And my favorite park I've been to at number one is Cedar Point. This is not the perfect park, but it's pretty dang close. The ride lineup is just literally out of this world. Even with Wicked Twister closing, it won't even make a dent in the lineup. It's got a very nice setting on the water. The atmosphere is incredible. At night, it's way too good. Millennium Force's atmosphere at night is top three I've seen. And let's go back to the lineup. Three coasters here are in my top six. Five coasters here make my top 30, which means a sixth of the coasters in my top 30 are at Cedar Point. That is amazing, and I really don't think they have a bad ride. I guess Woodstock Express is, because it's very jerky and not in a good way. You can honestly spend weeks at this park though and not get bored. It's amazing. It's the roller coaster capital of the world. It's going to be very tough to ever beat this place for me. Cedar Point ranks 1st for Coaster Collection, 
second for atmosphere, and eighth for scenery. So, that's going to wrap up this video. Let me know some of your favorite parks and tell me any of your park plans for 2022. I can't wait to add on to my collection of parks next year. And we'll see if anything breaks my top five. I'd appreciate if you shared the video, if you liked it, and if you did, hit that like button. Comment, subscribe, and I will see you later.